Am I aware of the vastly different time periods these figures come from? Yes. Do I care? No. Hello there, and I know what you're thinking. Lane, why are you reviewing two figures that have no correlation with each other whatsoever? Why am I hearing Tessa's voice? I buried her after Halloween. Check that out if you haven't. Anyway, to answer your question, I thought the correlation between these two was obvious. They're both black, critically acclaimed actors. Mace Windu being played by Samuel Jackson, and Moff Gideon being played by... Yeah. Him. For this video, I think I'm going to go in order of timeline, so we will start with Mace Windu. But before we get into it, if you enjoy my content, subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100 subscribers, so hitting that red button would be highly appreciated. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Mace Windu comes packaged on the usual Kenner-styled card with a direct clip from the movie as the image on the card. As a yellow background, you have his name, logo, which he is from Attack of the Clones, the second prequel film, and in my opinion, the weakest, but I still really like it. He is numbered as VC-35. This is one of the earliest figures, which is kind of crazy to me. Here is your kind of have a wave checklist. As you can see, this wave included a lot of reissues. That, I think that's even a reissue as well. And I have some of these. And then you have your legal and your warnings and a barcode. So yeah, there you have that. Here we have Mace Windu himself. The design is based on his appearance in the prequel film Attack of the Clones. However, the design is pretty much the exact same as Revenge of the Sith. The figure looks great. The colors are very accurate to the source material and the robes are sculpted very cleanly. Aside from the elbows, the joints here are very well hidden. In fact, the sculpting is so good that there's even tiny fingernails on his hands. The ropes look fairly believable as well, thanks to extra crease lines molded throughout. Although there isn't a lot of paint to detail, the stuff that's there is very nice. There's even some tiny details on the belt. Oddly enough, there was a bit of a misalignment on the belt buckle, which is the biggest and easiest piece to paint. The boot's color matching is excellent. The foot and joint are molded and the upper boot painted, but I bet you didn't even know that until I mentioned it. The skirt is made out of soft goods. I really like how fitted it is. Just an overall very good looking set of Jedi robes. The head sculpt is made using the new fancy face printing tech and looks great. Pretty much identical to Samuel L. Jackson's appearance. Though due to his bald head, you can see this seam line, which I assume is where two molds connect. Don't really notice it unless you really look. As I'm sure you expected, Mace Windu does come with some motherfucking accessories. The first is a soft good Jedi cloak. I must say I really like the fabric they used for this. It feels nice. Fits fairly well, but I do think the sleeves are a little long. And the hood can be a pain to not only get it down, but to get it to look good as well. He also comes with a lightsaber hilt, which is very nicely painted and fits easily into this port on the belt. Looks great. But of course, we all know that we like our Jedi holding their weapons, and especially Mace Windu. And considering how badly Jackson wanted it, it would be a motherfucking crime not to include an ignited lightsaber. The hilt is molded and painted as well as the last one, but sadly the black paint has rubbed off a bit. And of course, there's that beautiful purple blade which makes Windu stand out. Fits very nicely into either hand and looks as awesome as Jackson did wielding it. So, motherfucking awesome. <laughs> Wanna know what else is motherfucking awesome? The feel of this figure. That and the articulation. Articulation wise, Mace Windu has a ball joint at the head, can look up that far and look down, not really at all. Shoulders are just pegged in on that hinge there so they can rotate all the way around and move out. There is a cut above the elbow that allows for rotation. 90 degrees of bend, a little under actually. Yeah, no, about 90 degrees of bend at the elbow. Wrist swivel, 
ball jointed abdomen, which allows for good range of movement, as well as a little bit of crunch and arc. Swivel hinge hips, which allow him to kick forward that far and back that far. He has a cut above the knee that allows for rotation. 90 degrees of bend at the knee and an ankle cut which also allows for rotation and a hinge that can move down and up articulation on window is all right obviously an outdated mold so it's missing some of the fancy modern stuff you feel it more with the lower body than the upper with the lack of outward hips and ankle tilt that being said, I would have liked a wrist tilt as well so I could replicate the he's too dangerous to be left alive. That being said, you can still get some pretty cool poses out of this guy. For comparison, here is Mace Windu next to Moff Gideon, a 501st Clone Trooper, Yoda, Obi-Wan, Reva, and for a sense of general scale, here is Dawnbreaker and Hot Rod. Overall, this figure is pretty great. As per usual with these reissued molds, the only thing holding Mace back is the articulation. Just feels a little dated. That being said, the figure has some pretty solid accessories and looks amazing. The face is probably one of the best and most accurate I've seen, and the lightsaber is surprisingly detailed. For the price of $19, I think this figure is worth it. So that pretty much covers it for Mace Windu's side of the video, but we still have to travel in time by like 30 years to meet Moff Gideon. Being a part of the Carbonized collection, Moff Gideon comes packaged and it looks like a foil card that is also significantly thicker, about double layered. That being said, however, uh, the card itself doesn't look that good. It's really shiny, but the artwork kind of got lost or the image from the from the show kind of got lost here i don't know but here you it's carbonized sticker moff gideon the mandalorian you have the bubble which was a pain to get to on the back you have a bit of a description you have your wave checklist more foil and you have your words and barcode and warnings so yeah there you have that. And here we have Moff Gideon himself. This figure is from the Carbonized Collection, which I'm not usually a fan of. I find them to be expensive for what's essentially, hey, let's take a regular old VC figure, spray on some metallic paint, make the card significantly thicker, and charge an extra $5. The worst part, this does not apply here, but some figures manage to look worse with the metallic paint. The Shore Trooper looks like they just covered him in wax. Luckily, I got Moth here on sale for $9, and if I would have waited two weeks, I could have gotten him for three. Moth here is kind of the main villain of The Mandalorian and is played by him. I will probably butcher his name, hence why I just show it. We'll just use his last name Esposito, because I think I have that down. Anyway, at the time of purchasing, I hadn't seen Mandalorian, but as of now, I'm glad I picked this guy up, because the painting and sculpting and proportions on this figure are great. The metallic look on the armor really works here, and there's a pretty good amount of detail. It helps that Gideon easily has one of the most unique outfits for an Imperial. Lots of tiny details picked out in paint as well. The hands do not have molded fingernails, unfortunate, I know. I really like how the shoulder pads are done, similar to Vader's, which make them look like proper armor. The cape looks great as well. The sculpt isn't overly dynamic, but then again, Moff Gideon isn't overly dynamic. This isn't an insult to Esposito, he is probably very dynamic. Or not. I have no idea where I was going with this one. Once again, Photo Real is killing it with the faces, looking almost identical to their respective actors. I don't think it's as good as Jackson, though, but that's because... What is up with that hair? Looks like he just dumped a bottle of gloss into his hair. Heck, that's kind of what happened here, but with paint finishes. Just looks really off. Why does Hasbro keep screwing up hair? 
First they're screwing up on colors, then they dump the entire bottle of glass finish on it. Accessory wise, Moff Gideon comes with three accessories. The first is his cape, which just plugs into his back. The second is a small blaster, which doesn't have an official name, but looks to be modeled after a modern P-38 Walther. Not that one. Fits nicely into his right hand. Technically can fit in his left, but he lacks a trigger finger. He also comes with the Dark Saber. Looks good, but the blade could be more detailed. Fits well into either hand. Of course, Gideon's joints feel great, and because he's a more modern mold, he has modern articulation. Articulation-wise, Gideon has a dumbbell joint at the head, can look up that far and look down that far. Shoulders can rotate all the way around with the armor even moving out of the way and can move out. He has a swivel above the elbow as well as a single jointed elbow. Wrist swivel as well as a tilt. Abdomen ball joint which allows him to rotate all the way around. Can arc that far and crunch that far. Y jointed hips so if the hinge is faced outward, you can kick that far. And if you utilize this thigh swivel, you can, or thigh cut, you can kick forward that far and back that far. Swivel above the knee, but due to the sculpt, it it's, doesn't really work that well. As well as a 90 degree bend at the knee. Ankle tiltage, as well as pivot. Articulation on Gideon is pretty good. As usual, I ain't a fan of the Y-jointed hips, but I know for a fact that they can be worse. Thanks to the joints, he can really get Gideon into a good variety of poses. Unfortunately, due to who Moff Gideon is, you probably aren't going to be doing anything crazy with him. Jeez, Hasbro, you give non-dynamic characters crazy articulation, then give dynamic ones glorified bricks. Okay, not really, but for this video's pair, my point stands. For comparison, here's Moff Gideon next to fellow critically acclaimed actor Samuel L. Jackson, a 501st clone trooper, Yoda, Obi-Wan, Reva, and for a sense of general scale, here is Dawnbreaker and Hot Rod. Overall, this figure is pretty great. I really like Moff Gideon and Esposito is one of the best villain actors. So although I got this figure on sale, I'm now glad I have him. I think it is a very good representation of Gideon and the carbonization looks pretty good here. Then again, there are some figures where it really does, does work. Then again, there are some figures where it really does work. Of course, that hair does throw me off and the Y joints aren't my favorite, but I'm still pretty happy with this guy. So, so that pretty much covers it for this review. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and let me know what you think of the video through a comment. If you would like to see more of my content, feel free to check out some of the playlists linked in the description below. Of course, if you do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing. My current goal is to hit 100 subscribers, so hitting that red button would really help me. Who knows, if we hit 100, maybe I'll do a face reveal. Smallest, strongest, and one of the bravest. Gets shot in the shoulder, dies.